Hello and welcome to a new Vlogmas video. So I made a video two years ago about uh, origami and it actually got a fair amount of views. So we decided to do it again. And these are my hands. I'm gonna be making the snowflake, but my dad, he's gonna narrate. So dad, tell me how to do everything. Well, it's good uh, to start out with a um, rectangular piece of paper, which is what most people have. Uh, so we're using tracing paper, right. which I think is going to make the snowflake look super delicate and pretty. Yeah, the tracing paper is really nice um, because light shines through it. Uh, you can also use parchment paper that people use for baking, uh, but I find that a little stiffer and a little thicker and a little harder to work with. So, so we have the tracing paper and then we, you need scissors, but only to cut it originally before we even start folding, right? right? And then this little guy helps sometimes with the really difficult tiny fold. Exactly. We actually don't really know what this is, right? It's a dental tool maybe? It might be a dental tool. <laughs> so or... it's not like an official origami yeah. tool, but we, right. we've been using it. Step one is to make it a hexagon, right? Yes, you want to make it into a six-sided uh, figure, a hexagon. So the way to start that is to fold the paper in half lengthwise. And I'm going to try and make like super good creases because I feel like that helps. It does. Accuracy is important, but you don't want to get yourself too stressed out. Just do the best you can. Okay. And then open it up and fold each edge into the center uh, line. Uh, like that? Uh, or, you know, all the way like, oh, like this. this. And that uh, divides the long side of the paper into force. Nice. And there there are mathematical uh, principles here that I've read about, but uh, it's quite complicated. And everything, uh, all of these angles that we're going to create to make a, a nice equal hexagon uh, come out of the way you're folding this. And all the folds we're doing are, are just for the purposes of creating a perfectly even hexagon. Okay. Okay. And the different sizes of paper uh, doesn't really matter. This is an unusual size, uh, 9 inches by 12 inches. Uh, if you're using a standard uh, 8.5 by 11 inch uh, American printer paper, it would be a little different. Okay, so now you take the top right corner mm -hmm. and you fold, you start your fold at the center line. Oh yeah, I feel like I remember this from our last attempt. And then I want the point to go to this line. Right, and so you start your so fold. So one point is at this line right. and this, this point is at the fold, right. the and halfway those are, point. Those are your two uh, landmarks there. Mm -hmm. And the more you can be precise, the better it'll all turn out. Okay. Okay. And then the thing you're going to use for your guide is, is this line right here. This line? That line there. Right. So I, do I fold it all up? Or? Then, then you fold the whole thing over using that line as a guide, and you want that part of the paper to end up along the edge. Okay. So those are your two goals there is to fold along the bottom of that small uh, triangle and to bring the other edge up there. Okay, I feel like I did a okay job. Okay. Okay. Then, then your next uh, land, landmark, uh, or go ahead and leave that folded. Oh! Yep. And then your next landmark is this line here. Okay. And you want to fold this paper over here. Like that? Right. And again, this side reaches the edge like that. And so two things to look at. That edge and this edge here. Oh, I must have folded it a little off because it's not per perfect. It's very hard to get it precise, but I just try to I come I don't remember doing this before. Yeah, I'll just try to come okay. as close as you can. So what tool did you just get out? This is a tool that I bought from a um, supply house that supplies um, shops that do fingernails. Mm. And it's a oh, uh, I see. really wow. nice tool. Super One end nice. 
Just so you want me to use this as opposed to the dental tool? You could use either <laughs> one. I, I kind of prefer the one uh, that's got the point on one end and the round on the other end. Okay, what's All the right. next step? Next step is to unfold everything. Okay. And as you can see, we've now made some uh, lines there. So now we're going to do the same thing, except we're going to start on this side. And everything we're going to do is kind of like a mirror image right. of what we did before. It's just the reverse. So remember these two points here. Okay. And then your next, next landmark is this line. And so... Or I want to move to fold that edge over on oh, that whole line. Oh, this that way. And again, this edge lines up with the edge of the paper there. So real true uh, origami paper would be the nicest paper to work Ooh. with. And when you're starting, you might want to start with origami paper because it folds oh, so yeah. nice. This tracing paper is a little harder to a work with. A little harder to work with, but it, so it makes it. a beautiful end result. Okay. Okay, and then this is your next landmark here, and you fold that side over. And again, you want this end to line up there. That worked out better this, on this side. Yeah, and you can kind of tell your accuracy by how well everything kind of okay. matches and then unfold. And that is your Yay. hexagon. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six-sided figure. So that's, Perfect. that's what you Perfect. Then that's what we're going to cut out yeah. now. So in traditional origami, you wouldn't do any cutting, but this really d doesn't count because we're just trying Do they to... already have pieces of papers cut like hexagons? Is that why they don't cut anything? No, I've never uh, seen that. Uh, like I think they do have to cut. They still make, make the hexagon. Right. But once you start making the origami, it's considered not proper to do any cutting because that's kind of like cheating here. Yeah. One of the, the beauties of your origami is that everything's done with a single sheet of paper. But it, it doesn't have to be a certain size of paper. It could be square, rectangular, hexagon. Some of the ones I've made are pentagons. <clears throat> okay, almost done. When you use traditional origami paper, it usually has a colored side and a white side, and that kind of helps you see. You know, this is the same color on both sides, yeah. so it's a little more difficult. Okay, I'm going to put the scissors away, and I'm never going to use yep. them again. All right. We don't okay, now we're finally ready to actually start yep. our design. So this is the beginning of the snowflake, and you could cut a lot of these for yourself if you're planning to make three or four or six. Okay, so you start by folding this, this bottom straight line up to the center. And you try to get it as accurate as you can. And then when you're done, unfold that. And then you do it all around? And then just rotate and keep bringing the flat side, not the pointed side, but the flat side up to the folded line. And so all through this project, uh, many things are repeated six times, which is kind of nice. Yeah, that's kind of nice. So there's a lot of repetition, which is kind of relaxing, I find, and also gives you practice to get really good at it. And if you've done that correctly, there should be a small uh, hexagon in the center now. So you've got a large hexagon on the outside and a small one on the inside. So now what you do is you focus on these two lines that you've just folded that are next to each other. And you bring those up together. And what that does is kind of let that corner come together. And I think most people call that a rabbit ear. Okay. And so you just try to get that nice and accurate okay. and bring that up. And then I usually fold that little rabbit ear to the right and left just to make sure the, the edges are proper. Oh, really that's a good idea. Quite, uh, and then we keep going, right? Right. And usually I unfold it. Okay. Just, and then do the same thing on the next one, the two next to each other. 
It's already getting complicated. Yeah, making make <laughs> That's a wrap here. Advanced origami. Yeah, this is a moderately advanced I feel like origami. Maybe I think. not like appropriate craft project for like young children. It may not you be. Need to have like maybe like teenagers can do it. Right. And this, up and adults, but not. I think, I think it would be kind of frustrating. For a I child. think it would. There are steps that, that get pretty difficult. I would not make this as your first uh, yeah. origami project. You might find it quite frustrating. But it's so satisfying. Yes. When you do get it in the end. I'm make it. Oh, is that a little? A little off there. Oh. Off. There we go. Right. Okay. There. So I usually go around and just kind of fold everything first and um, uh, and then just unfold it. Uh, that way it, it is a little easier to work with. But on the next step we're going to go around and, and kind of refold everything we just folded. Already some of my little folds aren't holding up, aren't um super accurate, but oh well. You just repeat this six times. I think like I must be close. Yeah, must be. Actually, I haven't been counting. So now, can I bring them all together then, after this? You could, I, I think. Just They're supposed uh, to be all up and yeah. duck-eared in. Right. What's it called? Rabbit-eared? Rabbit-ears. I think, yeah, if you feel like this is your last one, then you could just leave that. So now I have to bring them all in together, right? Right. Uh, so now this one gets made into a rabbit oh, ear. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Kind of just going back and redoing what we did, but this time we're leaving, leaving, it, up. leaving it up. And you'll, of course, make six little rabbit ears sticking up there. Oops. And the last couple are a little trickier. Yeah. But, but it all came together. That's why I like to Yay. fold it and open it and then do the final step. So now I just go through and make all your rabbit ears nice and clean and crisp. But already not perfect but it's okay yeah it is it, the part it's just for enjoyment and okay. when you get it on your window it'll look perfect okay so now we're going to take each of those rabbit ears and make them into squash folds and we'll show you how to do that oh yeah this is where i can use a tool and this is where i often use the tool yeah and so you're going to kind of flatten that out and you use that middle crease to kind of uh, guide where you put that and that, that point should just go right down to the middle and the open part should for, face the center. And you don't have to use a tool but I find it just does make it kind of easier. Yeah it makes it a lot easier than trying to jam your finger in there to open it. And here it's nice to try to be as accurate as you can, get that middle line of the squash fold right pointing toward the center and that just uh, makes, because as you go further and further, uh, the accuracy that you've done now will, will pay off and make things easier and look nicer. Okay. Already you can kind of see a bit of a star forming there. Yeah. Yeah. Nice pose if you want it to work with uh, children. You might even just leave it like this and just put it on the window like that. That's That'd make true. a nice, nice start. That's true. I feel like there's a lot of stages of this that look super pretty. There are. And now the next step is you take each one of these little flattened rabbit ears and you fold the inner parts into the center. So you want the point of that fold in toward the center. And so this time you're making um, 12 of these. I 
find it is really helpful to have some little pointed tool that can kind of help you with these sort of intricate little folds. Trying to decide which side I like better. Yeah. It is nice, this tool is nice with that rounded edge and the pointed edge, because sometimes one or the other is better. You can tell this one wasn't folded very well, because mm. there's a little bit sticking out. <laughs> yeah. As you get further along, you kind of see some of the things you didn't do as accurately before it's really start to get amplified. Yeah, and again, each one of these steps, you could probably just stop and put it on a window or a tree, and, and it would make a really nice looking uh, little star, and it wouldn't be as, so difficult to go to this step. Yeah, it's pretty. Yep. It's cute. Okay, so now we've got all 12 folded, and now we're going to do something that's a little more uh, complex. We're going to take this fold that we just made and use the, the fold lines as a guide to reverse that. Oh gosh. So that is going to be, so you need to pick up one of them uh -huh. and lift it up and reverse it. And then take that, those, those folds you just made and just turn it inside out. And it's a little tricky until you start to get the hang of it. Um, but the folds you made before are the guide to turning that corner inside out. in here nice accurate points or, or nice kind of a good good like it's an advantage to have nails <laughs> it might be yeah <laughs> I, 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 I tend to use the tools on this so use your your fold lines as, as a guide now one of the lines will will already be folded in the right direction, but the other one will have to be folded in the opposite direction. So these little triangles that you've made are now um, being turned to the inside instead of the outside. This would be really hard if I was trying to just read about it. <laughs> It is As very po hard. As opposed to yeah. having pictures or like a, this video, I think, makes it so much easier. The first time I did it, I was just using a diagram and, and they had it's arrows really and things. But it was hard to follow. It really helps to see yeah. it being done a few times. And then it makes more sense. So you're just um, doing all 12 of these little things and turning them from their outside position into their inside position. I've used them to put on uh, packages, gifts, gifts That's for right. people. That's right. Yeah, we love hanging them in window sills, yeah. but we also like putting them on gifts. Yeah. My favorite is definitely the window sills because you can see the light reflected through all the layers. Yeah, part of the reason we're making all these different folds is just to create really interesting shadows uh, in the snowflake. Did it? Very good. Where did, oh, this part still. Yay. Okay, so now all of those 12 little triangles that you made have now been uh, folded into the center, and now you've got six diamond shapes there. Cool. So then this is kind of a cool little move. You take one of the points uh -huh. and then just fold it up to the top here. Like this? Like that. Easy. And this is always a good test of how accurate you've been oh, no. in the past. Okay, um, one is a success. That yeah. one folded perfectly. And if it just folds up, oh yeah, that's nice. That just folds up and stops right at the point there. So that's that pretty good so far. I know there's one of mine is pretty bad. Oh, it might be this one. And I wouldn't get too worried about it. Just just do your best. And, yeah. <laughs> but it is kind of fun to say, well, okay, I must have been doing pretty good because that, that folded up just right. A little crinkly right there. You're taking, uh, you've created a diamond, and then you've, you've taken the bottom half of the diamond and folded up on top of the top. Yeah, 
top half of the diamond. That's a good one. That's one good one. And again, you could okay. probably, probably not, stop at this point if you wanted. Yeah, not yeah. flawless, but yeah. super pretty. Okay. Nice. That looks good. What's the next step? <laughs> so this is the first time you turned the paper over. Oh, awesome. And I forgot this once, and I didn't turn it over, and I kept going, and it, of course, messes it all up. <laughs> <laughs> so now you're going to do a similar set of moves that we did on the other side, except instead of starting with the uh, straight line like that, we're going to start with the corners and, and put them up to the center. Okay. And let the little point stay uh, as you fold that up a little point of the star will, will stay below there and don't fold it just leave that out uh, flat okay. and again I just fold them and unfold them and then later yeah, that we'll makes it easy. go back and refold them as you get better you could probably do this in all one stage But it's a moderately difficult project because you get to getting smaller and smaller and working on uh, multiple layers. Yeah. So when we worked on the other side and did this move, creating rabbit ears, uh, uh, we, uh, yeah, perfect, looks great. Uh, we worked on the flat sides. So now we're, we're kind of shifting gears and we're moving the uh, points to the center. Yeah. And when we're all done, we'll, then we'll create rabbit ears. And those, those outside corners you want to make nice and sharp because they're going to be the part of your finished star there. Yeah, so you want them I'm nice, trying. nice and sharp. That's not super sharp. Oh. Yeah, it gets more difficult as it gets smaller and smaller. <laughs> I think it helps to just fold it and unfold it, and that gives the nice creases. Okay. Oh, okay. one more. One more. Okay. Good. Now you go back, just like we did on the other side, and you, you do two adjacent folds there, and you bring them together and make a little rabbit ear in the middle. Like this? Like that. Oh right. my gosh, really? Yep. Can I have the tool? Yep. I'm not going to start with that side. It's kind of wonky. Are you sure? Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> yep, nice. Mm -hmm. Yep, and so now we're making rabbit ears again, like we did on the other side, but now they're smaller, of course. And they, uh, and you just kind of keep going around adjacent folds. Okay. And you can just. I actually kind of prefer um, not take uh, undoing it. I kind of prefer oh, yeah. just working it I've around. done both. Oh. It, it uh, Ma makes more sense to me this way. Yeah. And, you and they're left the little, up. Leave the little rabbit ears sitting up. Yeah. yeah. Good. Good. This is why I like to like start. Like when, when, when I unfold each one, it for some reason it gets more confusing remembering oh. what I've just done. Yeah. Uh, this is why I like to start with a big piece of paper because if you start with a pretty small piece of paper when you get down to these stages you're working with a really small little thing. Oh yeah. And again this is where tools are nice. This last one's not cooperating. Yeah you can see how it all kind of wants to fold up funny there so the tool is kind of handy but I think in pure origami you wouldn't use any tools but I don't think it really matters. Really? You're not allowed to use tools? I really don't know. If, uh, I don't think that really matters. So now you've got six little rabbit ears. We paused it so that we could move in closer to the origami and I just realized there's like a huge bright spot on the table from our skylight but what can you do? Hopefully you can still see pretty well and we're just about to do the next step and the next step is to make more squash folds 
and again here's where the tool's kind of handy but you could definitely do this with your fingers and you're folding them flat again kind of lining up the uh, center mark and, f and the kind of the open part of the squash fold is facing the center center of the star so you're going around and making six uh, little squash folds there Yeah, again, you could probably stop here, uh, just depending on if you uh, don't want to do more. Okay. Because it's going to really look nice at that stage. So now the next step is really quite uh, difficult, especially if you try to figure it out from a diagram. And I, th I think the best way is just to watch it done a few times. What you're going to do is take this whole little structure that you've just folded here, and uh, reverse it so that it's in the inside. Okay. And that is hard to explain in words, but it's better to show it in real life like that. So Oops, you're con I... converting it from the outside to the inside. So you're basically reversing all of the folds. And now it's on the inside. So what was a fold one way gets turned to a fold the other way. And again, I use that uh, center fold as a good landmark as to where you're supposed to put things. I think watching somebody do this is, is a big help because it's so hard to, to describe in diagrams or even in words. And the tracing paper and the parchment paper make it a little more difficult. A real good origami paper would make this pretty easy, but it wouldn't be see-through. It wouldn't let the light through like this. Good. Yeah, that's great. This part's a little tricky, and it takes a little practice to kind of get good at this, because you're reversing every fold. Mm -hmm. And moving something that was on the outside to it's basically the paint, same shape on the inside. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Yeah, great. Now you're creating a lot of layers. That part there. I don't like because I feel like it made it less pretty. <laughs> but yeah. it's all worth it in the end. <laughs> yeah. Now you turn the paper over. Good. And um, you um, bring these little points here. Or, yeah, right there, up. Okay. And so now you're you're creating a real interest to the star with long star rays, I guess they're called, and small ones. Once I forgot to turn it over and I tried to do this on the other side, but of course that doesn't work. So if you find it's just not working, make sure you did turn it over. good point time to kind of fix things that were a little <laughs> off. Things move I think too as you fold. So each of those little points uh, goes up. So now you've got a 12-sided um, star. 12-pointed star. Okay. All right. So there you are on that stage. And again now you turn the paper over. And so this is a funny, tricky little move, and um, we've debated about why it's necessary, but you're going to uh, take the spot where, yeah, there you go, where that joins this, and just pull it up, and it kind of makes a satisfying little pop. Yeah, I love this part. So weird, though. Yeah, it's a funny How little stage, it it's, again, very hard to describe in words or diagrams, but you just pull the big one, and just gently pull it up and it will slip and a piece will come out and slip over the edge then. Crazy. Yeah, yeah, we were saying, how do people think of this? Yes. How do people make origami right. from nothing? Right, how do they do it? Some very smart person. So go around and do that 12 times. Okay, I think. Yep. All right.
Okay, so now this is a tricky little step and it, it might be good to watch it a couple times. And so you're you're making you're making a very sharp point at the very center and you're folding that into the middle, but at the same time paper will be kind of drug with it as it goes. And then you take that paper and you make the other little point of the star into a fold. And so it's it's hard to describe in pictures and words, but just kind of watch it. And I usually go around on the same side all the way around six times and then switch sides. But you can do both at the same time. So as you fold that in, the, the point of this star or this structure you're making is facing toward the center and then you bring the center of the star, then you bring the edge into the middle of the ray there and just kind of flatten it out. I think the point of this is just to make interesting shadows. When you put it on a window, it'll really create a lot of interesting shadows that almost make it have a look of uh, cut glass. And at this stage, you're almost done. Woohoo! as you bring that paper up for the bigger point of the star, uh, it kind of drags the paper that's attached to the smaller point. So you just kind of pull them along and make them all uniform and then flatten them down. Almost done with so, half of it. Yep, yeah, it's a moderately difficult uh, origami project, but uh, I recall once you get yeah origami tutorial. Right. Once you kind of get a few of these difficult steps, then you're just repeating them six times. Okay, I'm gonna go the other way. And you can make most of those uh, folds at the same time if you want, but I usually just make them all on one side first six times, and then go around to the other side six times. That looks so pretty after. Yeah. Don't forget to let the paper kind of fold right up to the tip of the small uh, star, too. Like that, right? Right. That adds a lot of interest, I think, to, mm -hmm. to both of the points there. Mm -hmm. Gives them a three-dimensional characteristic. you could skip this step if you want. Uh, it it would not end up looking... Yeah, why? Because it isn't really that hard once you kind of get the hang of it. Looks good. <laughs> now we ought to put it on the window and see how it looks with the light coming through. Yay! Looks really good. Yeah, we should show it. We should show it on the window. Any final words on oh, origami and your yeah. love for uh, it? <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, I would not try to be perfect and get yourself stressed about that. Just do the best you can and enjoy it. It's it should be relaxing and fun and and not stressful. Okay. Let's put and it now on the you end up with a little nice decoration. So usually, I usually project. use double stick tape on the other end. Yeah. Okay. That's all we'll get we'll that. do that. All right. Well, thanks for watching this video. Oh well, well, first we'll show it on window. But thanks for watching this video. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you for my next video. Ooh, looks so pretty. I love it. Good job, us. Yay, Dad. <laughs> <laughs>